Well, hello there. Welcome to the Obi Thorn Alliance. And in today's video, we're doing a review for Godzilla X Kong. If you like the sound of that, like and subscribe and stick around. So, what installment is this of the, the Kong Godzilla franchise? I've seen them, but I don't remember as well as you probably do. Where's this fall in the storyline? I believe it's the fifth one. The fifth one. So, why do they keep making these films? Because of money. Yeah, it seems like they keep making money. People keep turning out to see them. So, the latest installments made $436 million at the box office of yeah. a $135 million budget. So, it's, they made it. it's nearly made four times what it cost to make the film. So it's doing pretty well. People keep flocking out to see it. This movie's directed by Adam Wingard. So what would we know him from? Did he do the previous King Kong film? Yes, he did. So he did that. He's been invited to do the next one if they do do another one, which we can mm. get into later. The Guest and Your Next, they're two horror films that I haven't seen, but seen, apparently that's his genre horror. This movie stars Rebecca Hall. What would we know Rebecca Hall from? From Iron Man 3 and The Guest. Yeah, and she's in The Town, which is one of my favourite Ben Affleck films. We've got Brian Tyree, who is kind of the comic relief of this film. What Indeed. would we know him from? Bullet Train. Yeah, Bullet Train's a film we both really liked, and then he's in a show called Atlanta, which I'm a big mm. fan of. It has Haldish Gambino or Donald Glover, depending on what you want to call him, in the film, in the show, sorry. And then Dan Stevens, who the face seems familiar, but I couldn't work out what I know him from. What's he from? Woody and the Bees playing the Bees. Yeah, he was in a few other things. I think it said he was in Downton Abbey and a few other things, but that's what I'd know him from, Beauty and the Beast. So, kind of an okay cast, no one that really stands out. This film came out March 25, 2024. Who produced the film and where, where did they film this? The producers were Warner Brothers and it was filmed on the Gold Coast. Which is pretty cool because that's where we live, so mm. maybe I need to rewatch it and see if Hollow Earth looks like a backyard or anywhere I might recognise. <laughs> Probably not, but yeah, it's um, Warner Brothers do have a theme park here and they film a lot of films here. So tell me, what is this movie about before we get into the scoring of it? Uh, basically, it's from the aftermath of Mega Godzilla being defeated by King Kong and Godzilla, and then three years after events of that happening, and now we're kind of in this piece where Godzilla is the king of our dwelling, and King Kong is the king of Hollow Earth. So that's kind of where the movie is at, but there's a new threat arising that wants to get into our dwelling and that's where the movie is heading. So again, the humans find a need to go down to Hollow Earth to mm. help out King Kong or find out what's going on. We get met by this kind of avatar, picturesque kind of cinematography and we see this epic battle for the ages between Titans. Is there anything else to add to this film? Well, that's pretty much it or the rest of spoilers. It does have some involvement to do with the Modak show to do with Hollow Earth, but that would be spoilers, but it is important to watch the Modak show. I think after seeing this film, the thing I took away from is I kind of want to see the Modak show now. Yeah. I don't feel like I needed to see it, but I kind of want to see it because I think it might add a bit of an element to it. So let's get into our scoring and see how it did. So what did you give the plot of this film? For me, this is very much in the middle of its plot. It gets a five when we actually get the Titan battles when we get to see Godzilla and King Kong do what they do in their natural habitats and what they do, I actually enjoyed that a lot more and found it a lot more unique and engaging. But unfortunately, when they brought in human beings and beings evolved the movie, the movie dropped down quite a lot. And for me, that's where the plot really took a hit was because I didn't find them engaging enough. So for me, that basically because of the, the humans, it kind of, it basically reminds me of Transformers, what we say about the Transformers, because in those movies, the Transformers are the main characters, but we've got to have humans involved with this. King Kong is the best character in this movie, so... I gave the plot a three. I thought it was nothing interesting, nothing new, nothing inventive. The, the concept of someone wanting to come to our Earth and then them teaming up again to stop it, I just think that it's kind of been 
done or that's there's nothing new they did add a couple of cool elements with an ancient society inside hollow earth but beyond that it was just very basic but i guess there's not a whole lot you can do in a an action film where big giant beasts are fighting each other but it mm. didn't excite me I, I wouldn't say that people are going to be right theses on the plot of this film and how complex it is it's a very very simple in nature what do you give the acting for a film that has cgi beast as basically the main characters hey this gets a four i kind of wish they actually didn't have humans in these movies but they need to none of them really stood out to me i actually found them quite annoying very stereotypical i found that none of them really were that interesting or none of the performances it just felt like they were there for the sake of it and i really wanted king kong king kong was my favorite character i actually got more emotions from his facial expressions and what he was doing the humans for me no one's going to win any awards from this movie and the acting was, in my opinion, very scrappy and bad. I gave the acting a two. There wasn't a whole lot of acting in it. There wasn't a whole lot that needed to be done. But they made the characters kind of cheesy. Yeah. Especially the character play. <laughs> funny but wasn't and even the character that has a podcast is played by Brian Tyree <laughs> it was just kind of just generic trying to hopefully get a bit of comedy out of it and I don't know a decent performance might get nominated for an Oscar for <laughs> actor of the year I'm not sure that'd be interesting to see how he would accept his award but he did all right what do you give the directing and editing for me, this gets a five. The directing when it comes to how King Kong is going to be involved in the pacing to do when King Kong was in the movie, I really enjoyed that aspect. But basically, when the human beings were involved, for me, I did not enjoy that aspect. So that's why it was in the middle. And I am interested to see where they go where in the next film because it very much felt like that Godzilla wasn't in this movie as much. It actually felt like it went Godzilla, puny humans, and then Godzilla in the movie powering up for his next movie. So hopefully Godzilla will be the main character in the next movie. I've also gone in the middle with a five on the directing there wasn't anything special or they, 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 nothing stood out, but I'm not, not going to criticize for what they did because it, the film was what it was and they worked with what they had. And I just, I think it'd be fair, unfair to give it a poor mark on something that was really kind of did what it had to do, but I didn't blow it away. It wasn't Oppenheimer, whereas this cinematic experience and or a Michael Bay film that has these special effects and the, the way they do action scenes this is just cgi monsters fighting so there's only so much that can be done with that moving on to that what about the visuals and sounds of this film which is probably going to be the bit that stands out the most in a cgi heavy film for me this gets a seven for king kong godzilla the monster battles that's why you're going to see this movie and for me they now this aspect for a mindless action movie the visuals now this aspect but i kind of lowered the score a tiny bit because visuals doesn't get you the home run stretch for me i want more from my movies i've seen a lot of movies so for me i understand they did a good job with the visuals, but I can't give them a full mark because you're really only p playing with titans and there's only so much action that someone can take. I gave it a six for the visuals and sounds. It was visually appealing, the sound was booming, but I think you've got to see it in a cinema to get that experience. Yeah. I think if you were to watch it at home, you wouldn't think much of it. So. It gets that because it does suit the cinematic experience. What about the audience appeal? Those that like these type of films as a fan of the franchise, are they going to be disappointed? Are they going to be excited for the next film? What, what do you give it out of, out of 10? For me, this gets a six. I think people that enjoy these monster-verse movies are going to be excited and that's, that's fine. But for people that are casual fans, because I also asked my friends and they enjoyed it as well. But for other people that want more, this isn't gonna wow, wow 
people. So it's kind of in that middle. It's kind of what it is. It's kind of like the Fast and the Furious. People will just see this movie just because. And for me, it's kind of like, I enjoy it more than the Fast and the Furiouses. But really, they should really give what the people want is just Titans versus Titans. Get rid of the humans. So that's what would appeal to me more. But we're not going to get that. So yeah. I gave it a five. I think if you were a fan of the franchise, I think you're probably going to go back anyway if they make another one. I think they're gonna have to be run into like 10 movies before people really give up on it because it it's kind of one of those mindless watching films you don't really need to know what's going on you just go there to watch the two the titans bang against each other and fight so it will tick that but i do think it's a letdown compared to the other films i think people that are really that are genuine fans of this franchise are gonna go oh well i feel like it's gone back a step but that that's what i think and i think others might have the same opinion so i've given it a five i do disagree a little bit with jacob on the idea of people want to remove the humans. I, I think the Titans are the main thing, but I don't think it could work. I think you remove the humans and then there's no there's no talking anymore. For instance, the Transformers, it can work because the Transformers speak. Mm. So with that, that adds a whole other element that you could remove humans from the Transformers. That would work. I don't think this would work if you removed it. It would just become a film like Silent Night, which I, you haven't seen, where it's just no talking. It's very hard and odd to watch. So was this film original or creative, and what do you give it out of 10? No, it was not. I give this a 2 for me. From watching Modark, I would have liked it if they actually referenced the show a little bit more. And when it comes to creativity, it does not blow you away, but you could argue it was not supposed to, but I kind of go, well, when you watch so many action movies, you know you're going to get the final boss fight at the end and the heroes winning, and they did it pretty easily, and if i got to be honest, it felt like Godzilla is powering up for the next movie. Yes, a two, and... I think it deserved that score. I gave it a five, this, and I think it's because I didn't watch Mod Arc that yeah. I saw some new, me, new characters that were introduced or a new society, and that was the more interesting part of the show or the movie, I thought, where that wasn't new to Jacob, so that kind of changed mm. our scores there. So what was your final score? Out of 100%, it gets a 48%, and I, I was thinking it was going to get around a 5 or a 6, but it deserves this score. Your mindless action popcorn flick can only get so much, and I think it definitely deserves this score. I kind of know what you're getting at this point. Yes, it's a fun movie, but I, I can see there definitely, it. this feels like a setup movie for the next film, and I think that's why Luke's saying it's not as good as the other movie, because it feels like a setup movie. Basically, what Godzilla does for the entire movie is power up, but he doesn't do it for the villain of this movie. He defeats this villain pretty easily and he powers up from the next movie's villain. It's a very weird thing to do, but 48% well deserved. I don't know if I would recommend seeing it at the movies. It's a very easy stream movie, so I'd recommend streaming it at, at home. Yeah. So my score added up to be 43%, just a bit lower than Jacob's. That's kind of what I expected with this type of film. I'm not saying it's a bad film, it's just based on the way we score things. Something like Oppenheimer that won a lot of awards last year. If that's going to be in the 90s, then this is not going to be up there. <laughs> doesn't mean it's a horrible film, but you've got to compare apples with apples. It's only fair that you have a scoring system that can apply to everything. So I think this is 43%. I think it's fair. IMBD gave it 6.5 out of 10, so that'd be 65%. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it 54%. So we kind of both fell in below the ratings of critics and IMBD. So I don't know. Are we too harsh? I guess you guys make the judge. Think, Comment down below what you would have given it. Yeah. As always, you're awesome and keep being awesome. Like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.